Hi, everybody. Welcome to Triangle BNI, uh, our weekly talk show where we show you how to grow or start your own small business. Uh, we'll have wonderful guests on each week telling you how they got started. Our guest this week, uh, President of Critch Co. Construction, Andy Critchman. Andy, glad to have you here today. Thanks for having me, Mike. Pleasure to see you. So uh, we're going to get into your story with BNI, uh, but first of all, give us a State of the Union of Critch Co. Construction today. State of the Union. Uh, Critch Co. Construction builds high-end custom homes and whole house renovations. We are currently working on two new custom homes and uh, two good-sized whole house renovations, and uh, really happy to be doing so. It's a great economy, and yeah. things are happening, and we're building every day, and happy to be here. Good deal. So 1989, it all started. What was the thought? What was the genesis? Um, you know, I've always been able to take things apart and put them back together. Uh, I've always been good at building things. And, uh, you know, construction came comes easily to me. And uh, we were able to put things together and build good things for great people. And it's worked out really well. Is family in the background somehow to get started? Um, Did you tinker when you are little? You know, I had a lot of family to get me started. <laughs> I don't think any of us would be here without family. Uh, gave me a, ba a great background. Um, you know, my mom, if something broke, would put out the curb and, you know, the the blender or the coffee maker. And if I was on the way to school and I saw something out there that looked interesting, I'd take it and stick it up in my room. When I came home from school, I'd come back in and take it apart and see if I could <laughs> fix it. And I've just always been good at building things and yeah. fixing things. So, uh, yeah, I got a little little background there from the family, but uh, I, I started the business myself. How many people were with you when you started? I started with just myself and uh, grew from there and we're up to... Uh, 15 people full time. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, your first, okay, your first job was what? First with Critchko. Job with Critchko. I don't, let's we'll have to think about that. I, <laughs> I guess, uh, you know, we did a lot. We started with a few, a couple of smaller jobs. Uh, we did a, we did a big um, renovation on a house that actually Coach K lives on. And right now we built that house originally. We came in and, and uh, did a renovation for a doctor over at Duke. Um, Coach K is not the original owner there. Okay. Uh, so we did a, you know, it was, we started off with a redoing a closet for a guy um, who was the CEO of Duke Medical Center. And one by one, he gave us more and more projects. And we did a big custom swimming pool and refinished the basement and turned to the house it is now. So uh, all our all our jobs come from referrals. They're all passed on from one customer yeah. to the next. Best way to go. And that's the beauty yeah. of BNI as well. So when did you first hear of BNI? <laughs> so when I first heard of BNI was around 2009. And uh, you know, we were busy, busy, busy. And then all of a sudden the market just collapsed. Oh, yeah. There was nothing. I didn't, you know, when, when someone said network to me, I thought network was ABC or CBS <laughs> or, you know, I mean, we, we had all our contacts and we worked with people and we were so busy. We were, we were wishing that things were a little less busy. We, we, it was hard to keep yeah. up with the economy and the economy just fell out. And, uh, a friend of mine, uh, who I, I know from the wakeboard world, um, said, you know, I want you to come to lunch with me. I want you to check something out. I said, I asked him what it was. He told me a little bit and he said, man, you are a natural. You already do all these things this group yeah. talks about and you really need to check it out. And, uh, I came and, and, uh, been a member ever since, I guess that was about nine years ago. Okay. The Bull City chapter you're in now? The, the, the first <clears throat> and only chapter yeah. I ever visited and first the only place I've ever been. So when you went to the, the meeting, what's the first thing that jumped out at you? Uh, there's a lot of positive, motivated people who really wanted to, um, help each other in business, wanted to, uh, um, help each other to grow. And it was a, a very positive environment, which, uh, which I like a lot that works yeah. for me. Yeah. I was talk when I talk to people about joining BNI, and I always tell them to think of their meeting as at one client, not like 45 people or 20 people. Oh my gosh. How am I going to pass a referral to everybody do all this? But if you have a client. If your meeting is worth 25% of your bottom line and you have another client worth 25% of your bottom line, they say, Hey, every Monday morning we're having coffee at fill in the blank. Guess where you're going to be? Yeah. Makes perfect yeah. sense. So it's the same thing. When you walk in, you know that that's a client because there's all kinds of people listening for you yeah. and looking out for you. So who were the first people you, that were drawn to you as referral, as natural referral partners? Uh, let's say, you know, that when, when we first joined, there was not a lot of business going on. So, um, you know, we would go hang a ceiling fan for someone if we needed yep. to. Um, you know, I just tried to figure out who in the group was making things happen and try to do a little project for them here or there. The first year I was in BNI, we did maybe $35,000 worth of work with the group, you know, less than 1% <laughs> of what we do. And you uh, did that less than 1% then. Yeah. But still and once a week you show up and make 1%, it, I, right? It, it was, it, it took a lot of work and I, yeah. and we didn't do a lot that first year, but in the next two years, 
we did over two million dollars worth of work from the group. Wow! So yeah, an awfully big jump. So it took a little while to prove myself, mm-hmm. and uh, once people got to know, like, and trust me, yeah, uh, we took a huge jump, and um, and and I've never looked back. Didn't hang too many ceiling fans after that third no, year, right? No, I haven't <laughs> hung a ceiling fan since. So how'd you get through the economy? Because it it hit everybody, and yeah. a lot, your industry especially, yeah. it weeded out the real estate. It weeded out a lot of people. We just had to, we were a, a really good, strong company for, but we had to get lean and mean. You know, we had to be really cost conscious about everything we did. We had to make sure that everything that we we're touching was the most cost effective way to do it. Yeah, it made us a better company. It made us really work for what we had to do. Um, at one point, there are a lot more people who, um, there are a lot more contractors than there were. At, at one point, there's there's more people in need of contractors than there were contractors and things were easy. Okay, right. And then uh, and, you know, after that, there's a lot of contractors around. There wasn't a lot of work. So it got rid of anybody who wasn't you know really super solid. And uh, we did out the competition and we hung with it. We had a, um, we just had to cut corners and, yeah. and be smart about it. We had to take projects that we wouldn't normally take. Uh, we continue to treat people really, really well, and uh, things turned around, and uh, they're rolling again. So the chapter then served help kind of bridge that gap as the yeah, economy definitely the chapter economy. definitely helped us help, helped us get through that. So the first few meetings you go to, you're sitting and listening and learning and head spinning because there's a bit of information. Uh, kind of get overwhelmed. You can, you know, if you're not used to that, get overwhelmed overwhelmed a little bit just trying to figure out um, what to do, who to meet, how to help, how to listen. But so what did you learn that first year being in the chapter? Well, I learned there's, there's a lot more to it than I first realized. And, uh, I, I realized that, um, we needed some sort of mentor program. So it, it <clears> took <throat> a lot to get up to speed. So within our group, we, uh, we then, uh, once I'd been in the chapter for about a year, um, uh, they, I think they asked me to be um, president then. And, and, um, the, the fellow that, that been president came to me, he was a smart guy, really, you know, really smart happening fella. Um, but it was a little bit hard on people. And, uh, he came to me <laughs> and he said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to step down and, and I'd like you to be president. I said, no, I'm not interested. <laughs> in that. I'm just trying to figure out how this whole thing works and, and get something going. And he, uh, we talked for a while longer. He said, well, I'll tell you what, there's two choices. Either I'm going to be president again, or you're going to be president. I said, man, <laughs> we need a change. So, so I took on the role and, and it worked and we put in a mentor program. Mm, uh, to help yep. get new people um, solid, and now I think it's it's been adopted yep. uh, across yep. the whole um, area. And uh, so now what we do is we'll um, we'll assign every single new member a mentor, and that mentor will meet with that person once a week and go through yep. any uh, anything that that new member might um, need to get up to speed on, and make it a little bit more of a one on one get people up to B and I standards really quickly. Yep. And what did that do for the retention of the chapter? Oh, that was huge. That yeah. made a, a world of difference. At at one point, our chapter was taking on new members. We were making people so successful that they couldn't keep up with the work and they were dropping out of the chapter. Yeah. So now when someone applies to the chapter, if it looks like a serious candidate, we'll sit them down and say, look, can you handle two, three, four, five times as much work as you're doing right now? Yeah. And and if they can't, then we say, well, what would it take for you to to handle this amount of workload? And uh, And we say, if you were five times as busy, what would you have to do? And start putting those things in place. You don't have to hire the people yet, but know what yeah. you do when you get that this busy. And that way, as people pick up on their business from BNI, um, they can handle it. And we now are are not losing people. Where at one time we were making people successful, and then they're just <laughs> dropping out. The thing that made them oh, yeah. so so um, successful, they couldn't keep up with it. So yeah, and people really drop well. out. People drop out for different reasons. I know with solopreneurs struggle. They get to that point. They get to the success point where I got to hire somebody. Mm-hmm. And then, do I want to hire that person? You're a little different because your company's a little bit bigger. Right. But you've been through those growth stages oh, as yeah. well. Yeah, I started with just a nail patch and a hammer, <laughs> and a 1974 <laughs> Ford pickup truck. So, are there many solopreneurs in your chapter? Uh, not really. Okay. Most of them are, are decent size uh, people or people that started there and, and have grown. Yeah. You know, once you stay in our chapter, you're not going to make it as a, a one person outfit. Yeah. We just passed too many uh, referrals. We'll pass, um, you know, a hundred thousand dollars a month in, in profit within our group. It's, you know, at least $25,000 every single week. Yep. So, um, th- this chapter makes people make money. It's the Yankees and the Cowboys of Triangle B and I's chapter. Uh, if you want more information on Triangle B and I, you can go to, 
uh, trianglebni.com, or you can go to 919-465-1667, get more information, talk to Steve Hand, who is running the Triangle BNI, uh, doing a wonderful job of growing it through programs like that. Or you can talk to Mary or Brenda in the office, and they can uh, get you some information. Please go visit a chapter. Uh, you can visit two chapters uh, before you have to make a decision on joining. Uh, it's a wonderful place to help grow your business. So mentoring program, I know the people that came in, well, your first year there, had that program been in place, probably would have been. It would, yeah, it would have made things much, much easier yeah. for me. I had to figure a lot of things out. And there are things that the chapter was doing great. And truthfully, there's things that um, we weren't doing as well mm-hmm. then as we are now. So, uh, you know, like anything, we try to focus on, uh, or me personally, I try to look at what am I doing good and do yeah. more of it? And what am I not doing as well? And uh, figure out ways to do it better. And I'd go through that every single day of my life. And that's how I keep growing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and we've done that within the chapter, which is which has helped us a whole lot. Yeah. And one of the one of the biggest things for any chapter is to obviously invite visitors mm-hmm. uh, who could turn into potential members or just turn into business for people. How do you guys handle your visitors' days, inviting people, follow up, and stuff like that? Because the follow up is huge as well. Yeah. Sure. So um, so every member uh, invites new visitors to come uh, check it out. Sometimes it's someone who just is coming in to see what we're about. And other times it's someone who actually will be a viable potential member of the group. And uh, as the visitors come, then we kind of weed through and see who's for real and who's solid, who could who could handle the business. Because truthfully, it, it takes quite a bit to be able to keep up. We're not looking for just anybody. We're looking for good, solid people that we can know, like, and trust and then refer to. So with the amount of business you do, the size of the company you have, how do you track where your referrals are coming from? Who sent it? Because a lot of times it's that second one where you were so good with that client yeah. that, oh, you got you to gotta call Andy. He's just, don't call anybody yeah. else. You got to call Andy. So how do you track all that as, as a member of the chapter? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So I, I'm on referrals now that are sometimes two, three, four, seven, ten 10 tiers down the road where someone passed me a referral and then that customer referred me to somebody else. And um, so what I do is once a month, when I look through what we what kind of work we did for the um, for the month, I I know where everything came from, and then I'll I'll give proper credit uh, on BNI Connect. And then how are you, how are you keeping that database together? How do you for tips for everybody? Because a lot of times it's um, I'm so busy I can't fill in the blank, <laughs> can't do yeah, this, yeah, can't do that. Yeah, so true. how do you track all that? So once a month, I sit down and I look at um, our job costs. Uh, of what jobs we worked on this mm-hmm. this month, what do we bill? And then I, I know in my head where they came and I just attribute that once a month. Sometimes as the checks come in, I'll attribute it. I, you know, there's a really easy app you can go on on your phone and you know, oh. and I connect and yep. enter it in there. And um, I love giving people credit for when people help me. So I like yep. to keep up with the referrals that people have passed. And to me, it's uh, very rewarding to be able to thank someone that, hey, you passed me this referral and we made $50,000 from this one yeah. referral. Or you passed me a referral, we made ten thousand dollars for it, and then it has passed on to eight other referrals. And overall, that one connection you, <laughs> you gave me has made us two hundred thousand hmm. um, dollars or more. So uh, it's a it's a system that works. It's worth launch your cup of coffee, cup of coffee one day for somebody that passes yeah. you that much, right? Yeah. <laughs> we, we do more than that for people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So within your company, who helps you keep a, keep a handle on all the stuff that you need to do through BNI or your referrals, follow ups, and all that? Um, through the BNI stuff, I handle that all Dude. myself. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a girl in the office that'll help me. Um, sometimes we, we compose a spreadsheet every month that keeps track of everybody in the chapter and, um, and it keeps track of how many times do they show up? Uh, how many times, uh, are, are they meeting with other members mm-hmm. for a one-to-one? How many times are they passing referrals and the thank you for closed business? So we keep a, um, a color coded spreadsheet every month that, and she helps me with that a little bit. But other than that, I take care of all the BNI stuff myself. It, it's something I, I want to be uh, connected to and touching. Mm. <clears throat> Once you got the hang of BNI after your first year, figured everything out, got set in place what you needed to have done. Did you go visit other chapters? Nope. <clears throat> <laughs> Even though there's not many builders, right? I've never been to another <laughs> BNI chapter in nine years. I go, I show up to mine. I, I show up to my power sphere. I show up every single week unless I'm traveling. Yep. You know, I'll, I'll make it to. You know, I may miss one or two a year, but I come every single time I come, something good happens. Yeah. And, uh, and if you miss, you don't, you don't know what's going to happen. I showed up one day and a realtor happened to be visiting 
and I got a referral for him for a $250,000 renovation job. I never met him before. And uh, I didn't even know it came from him. I asked the customer and he mentioned a guy's name. I didn't even know who he was talking about. It wasn't until three or four months into the project, something got said that made me realize that the realtor that had come visit our chapter one day had passed me the referral just because he met me, he liked what I had to say. Yeah. And uh, we got a big job out of it. So um, if you don't go, you don't know what what you're missing. And it's as simple as that, just either showing up each week or sending a sub. So that realtor, had you not had a sub there, realtor may not have heard your company name or yeah, known he, what you Well, did. he wouldn't pass the referral to a sub. And yeah. you know, subs are great if you're out, but subs don't cut it. No sub yeah. is ever going to be you. So I show up every single week. Mm -hmm. I talk about myself, how we go about doing things. It's all about being there. You know, you, you can't get something done if you're not there. But when we all can come to the meeting every single yeah. week, it just works. So it's about showing up reliably. So what sets you apart from the other builders before the recession, after the recession, yeah. all that stuff? But we care about our customers. Um, we actually ask the questions to figure out what is someone trying to accomplish. I ask more questions than probably most other builders do because I really care about what is my customer trying to accomplish. And sometimes they are trying to accomplish things that are um, that they don't even realize, but I can yeah. read between the lines. And I can um, figure out what's going on. And, and we treat every customer like it's my brother or my dad, uh, my mm -hmm. sister. You know, we're just real straightforward with people. Um, we're good at what we do. Uh, we're honest. We're reliable. And we give people a detailed breakdown of every single thing we do on that job. We give receipts for every piece of uh, material that wow. we buy. So you can, you can look up and see, you know, what did that piece of PVC cost me? Yeah. So we give detailed receipts of everything and, and a real detailed breakdown. And we do excellent work. Have you had to build a house for a family member yet? Uh, I have not built a whole house for a family member, but um, we've certainly done renovation work and repair work for people. <laughs> Do people come to you with, I have an idea, and then you two sit down and kind of... Yeah, there, you know, there's times where someone has um, a full-blown set of plans, and that's great. And there's times where someone has some, some sketches drawn on a cocktail napkin <laughs> and everything in between. So the earlier someone comes to me, really, the better, yeah. uh, the more I can help them. But uh, we get everything from an idea in their head to... Um, to full bloom plants and yeah. can work with any of it. So you mentioned earlier your power spheres. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that and who me who's in that and how often you guys meet and what you kind of get done. Yeah. There. So uh, the group breaks down into individual power spheres based on the type of work that we do. So I'm in the real estate power sphere, and um, and everyone who's connected with, with real estate will meet uh, one Thursday before our meeting. So we'll have um, uh, you know maybe the plumber, electrician, the HVAC person, the guy who does the flooring. Uh, the person who makes the loans to the customers, the realtor, and uh, we can have a little bit closer knit conversation just among ourselves to help figure out how we can pass more referrals, and that that works really really well. And that's once a month. We do that <laughs> once a month. So, how, who, what's the agenda look like for meetings? For those meetings, uh, we'll start off with um, what's gone well for people in the last month. Has anybody have any good success stories? And there's always a, a ton of those. And then we'll move into uh, maybe what is happening in each of our uh, worlds, what's, what kind of new information is going on. And then we'll have one or two of the members of the sphere to give a little more information about themselves, maybe a 10 minute talk. Okay. And so we're all trying to get to know each other within the sphere even better than we know the members of the group. How hard was that to get started, to get everybody to buy into that concept, which is a wonderful thing, by the way? Um, it's pretty easy. You know, there, there's a there's a core group of people that really uh, believes in what we do, and we, we get together on a regular basis, and we don't miss. There's other people that are uh, in the real estate sphere, don't come as often, and, yeah. and, and they miss out, and we miss out from having them. Mm -hmm. But the people who show up get something from every single meeting. Generally, some business will come out of oh, every yeah. meeting? Oh, yeah. Okay. So what else? Uh, what else do you like about your chapter is I mean, it's the biggest one in the area and everybody knows that. And, and you guys are structured and organized and numbers show that, but what, yeah. uh, what makes it worth going every week outside of the numbers? Well, I, I don't know if everybody's this way, but I like being the best and, uh, I like building the, the finest custom homes. I like being in the best BNI group and whatever team I'm on, I'm going to do everything I can to, to make it win. And, um, and we are, we're, we've been very, very successful, not only in business, but, the members of this group help each other in all sorts of ways. No matter what you need in your life or your business, there's someone in the group mm -hmm. that has more information about it uh, than you do. And I think part of life is knowing what you're good at and what you're not good at. And, uh, and you got to figure out where you need a little help. That's yeah. how we all keep growing. But there are 
there's you know 40 some odd people within this group that are all really really good at what they do we're not going to just take someone that's you know halfway you got to be top of your uh, business to get in with us and um, if you need any sort of help there's someone there that can help you um, you know we've got a, a wonderful uh, business attorney that I'll seek out advice from a couple times a year and uh, as soon as I call she answers the phone uh, we're on it and I get things solved in one phone call for 20 minutes that might have taken me six months to figure out without that. Yeah. Uh, same thing if I have a customer who needs a, a loan and they have some kind of unusual circumstance. I've got bankers and loan people that I can go to directly that we know and trust each other. We can talk openly. Hey, this is this person's situation. This is what I'm trying to work out. What would you do? And um, people treat each other like it's your brother or your dad. And you get that inside information from really well-trained professionals. What uh, what are some, <clears throat> the changeover twice a year with leadership teams? What uh, usually try to pick a goal or two to hit during that six months? What are you guys working on, and and yeah. what have you worked on in the past that has hit hit really well? So um, <clears throat> we we are trying to get a, a higher level of quality people within the group. I think when I joined the group, um, it was it was good solid people, but um, we're raising the level of professionalism yeah. within our group. I think there's four or five attorneys within the group. Um, Which is know, amazing. Yeah, high, high level professionals yeah. that all work together really, really well. And so we're now working on how to pass better and more solid referrals to one another. And we're growing the numbers where um, we've been passing um, you know, about a $25,000 a week, $100,000 uh, a month, a million two in a year mm -hmm. of, of profit. Um, over uh, recent times, that number has been increasing. And uh, we're going to take it up to 1.8. We're going to raise it 50% here in the next year and a half. And uh, we'd like to get it through the $2 million mark. And that just comes from people working together uh, in a better way. What do you, is there a head count that's too big to have size wise? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. Uh, you know, we had a fellow in the chapter years ago who came from a chapter uh, down in Florida that had like 70 or 80 members. And oh. he was always trying to grow it to uh, that sort of thing. What I've seen for our group is, um, you know, 45 members is kind of the magic number, 40, 45, somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. Uh, a couple of times we've been down in the 30s and it hasn't been as strong. A couple of times we've been up around the 50 member mark and it's gotten too big. It almost becomes a little more um, clickish yeah. and you start breaking down into subgroups and people don't know each other as well. There's not enough time for people to really speak about what they do. For us, the magic number is 40 to 45 people. That works really well. Yeah, because you want that personal connection as well. You want to be really able to walk in and say, oh, who's that? And you go, uh, yeah. I don't really know them, yeah. <laughs> which is a struggle. So when you're able to, when you would, so when you bring a visitor, mm -hmm. um, you can say, okay, this, you need to meet these five people in here. Yeah. If I bring a visitor, I right away tell them, you know, th these are the three or four or five people that you will get the most um, traction from. And I'll yeah. go and make that introduction individually. And uh, that works out really well. So some of the companies you that do sub work for you, if they do, if you do that, have you told them about BNI and what's yeah, that, been their reaction? That's that's not normally who I'm bringing as a visitor. The yeah. people that we're using as subs, we keep them busy. The subs that we use can't even keep up with all the work that we have. So I'm not trying <laughs> that's to good spread, for them. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to spread them around. <laughs> um, uh, but I'll typically bring someone that is good for other people within the group. Yep. So I'm not necessarily bringing people that I already work with. I'm bringing people that uh, would like to meet people within the group that are looking to grow their businesses. The people we're working with, we keep them busy. They don't have time to do anything else. <laughs> and they're very thankful for that. And right? they appreciate it very much. Yeah. <laughs> and they keep telling you, go to that meeting every week yeah. to get more business. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I don't talk about BNI to the people that we work with. Yeah. Um, to me, it's something that I do that works for us, but I don't go talk to my customers about BNI. To, I don't talk to my subs. They just know I'm bringing the work in. Yeah. They don't know where it's coming from. Truthfully, they don't care. Uh, you know, they want to come, they want to run wires. They want to, Whole pipes, you know, they want to they want to build these houses and go home and go fishing and play with their families, and um, they're happy that I go eat lunch with people every week. But they they don't care what I'm doing. <laughs> He's the boss. It's another yeah, right. They, they don't yeah. care. Yeah. So you said earlier you're working on you're building a couple of houses. Uh huh. Uh, where what part of town are those in? And so um, we've got one just off of Franklin Street in mm -hmm. Chapel Hill. Uh, this is a second home for a, a well known architect. Uh, we built his first personal home back in 2001. And uh, he's now uh, building a, a second home. So we're very happy working on that. And I think that's probably the, the best testament you can get when, mm -hmm. when we build houses for architects as their personal home. It, I think that says a lot. And we build more homes for architects uh, than anyone else in the area. 
uh, once wow. they work with us on, a, on another job, they like us well enough that, um, you know, that they trust what we do and know how we go about doing things. That's you impressive. get to know someone pretty well from working through a, a job. Oh. And uh, so we, we love building architects home. So what was the biggest challenge of any renovation? Because on your website, you guys do everything from fencing and, you yeah. know, all kinds of things, pond, you know, uh, landscaping and, you know, stuff like that and renovations, yeah. house, full house. What's, what was it early biggest challenge for you learning something? You know, every job has new challenges. I, I, I don't go a day without learning something new. Um, you know, every time, no matter where you are in life, you learn how to face those challenges and you stretch yourself. You go on to something uh, bigger and more. Um, at things that I do now that come easily to me um, are things that were really hard 10 years ago. And, um, and the things that I'm struggling with right now are probably going to be nothing compared to what I yeah. will challenge myself 10 years from now. So I like facing things head on, seeing what we can do, fixing things. Um, I like to say I'm either braver or dumber than other builders, uh, because I'm not scared of a challenge. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you, when you do something well and it works and, you know, you come out looking good, then you're really brave. You, you know, those few times where you do something that didn't work out so well, then you're like, well, you're pretty dumb for taking that on. <laughs> but, uh, one of the challenges every day Yeah, for people who are not that familiar with B and I during a meeting, each of the members will stand up and call it an elevator pitch, whatever you want, either 30 seconds, but somewhere between. 30 seconds and a minute, depending on the size of your group. So when you stand up, what kind of things are you talking about? So your members know, okay, right. I know somebody with that. Well, I start off every week um, reminding our members that, you know, um, hey, I'm Andy with Critchco Construction. We build the finest custom homes, additions, and renovations in the area. So they, they hear that every week and they're prepared for um, when they see our work to go, oh, this really is the finest work in the area. Then I'll follow up with whatever we're looking for that week. We may be uh, working with some people on renovations. We may be looking for a new whole house renovation. Uh, we may have just been getting ready to finish up a, a new custom home. We're looking for another custom home. We may be uh, looking to meet an architect. So whatever's going on in our world, we kind of share with the group. And it's kind of like life. You, you ask the universe for things and the universe <laughs> delivers. You, know, you, we, you ask it in our group and they yeah. bring it to you. And some of the best referrals are the ones that just come out of the blue aren't they? You know, they, they seem like they come out of the blue, but <laughs> I, I know there's something more to the world. It, you know, you, yep. you put it out there to the universe and, and things just happen. And I, I can't fully explain it. And everybody has their different reasoning why these things happen. But I believe when you believe something in your heart and you visualize mm -hmm. it and you, you work hard to make things happen, they, they come about. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I like to say um, that I, we create our own luck and I feel like yeah. a really lucky person in, in a lot of ways. And I've worked hard to that luck and i'm very blessed that uh as many good things have come my way as they can and hope many more will keep happening that way and also one of the key points of that uh pitch is to remind to make sure people know what you what you do first of all you want to tell them exactly what you do but also tell them what you don't do so they won't ask they won't say oh call andy he does this yeah. are there some things you don't do i don't focus on what i don't do i okay. don't focus on no i don't focus on don't um, I believe in putting out there what you do and keeping it positive. If someone calls for something that, that is not the, our forte, then I'll, I'll say to them one-on-one, -on -one. Okay. but um, I don't, I don't tell people what I don't do because right. um, you never know what you're going to do. <laughs> the opportunities are endless. That brand new PNC arena, they're going to build someday somewhere. Yeah, I, that, I haven't right? built it before, but, but you know, you'll, you'll take that phone call, right? <laughs> I, I'll, I'll certainly talk about it and see if there's a way to help us make that person happy for sure. And also during the meeting uh, each week, there's a 10 minute speaker or five minutes, depending on the size of the group. Sometimes it's two, five minute speakers just yeah. to keep the rotation going. What kind of things do you talk about when it's your turn to have that? Yeah. So, so in our group, we do um, two six minute presenters Good. each week. And, um, Sometimes I'll show pictures of what we do. Sometimes I'll show a detailed breakdown of how we bill someone. Um, I'll talk about some specific jobs. And I uh, just try to help our members get to know me a little bit better and how to uh, understand what we do in a little more detail. Okay. So this is July, early, mid-July. So Mid-July now, yeah. I know, yeah. I know. So by the end of the year, are there some sales goals that you have for a company, whether it's with or, with or without B&I? Just yeah. in general, things going well? Yeah, things going real well. Um, we will not have time to build all the things that people are talking to us about building through the end of the year. Um, we're that busy. We're starting a book up for 2019 now. Wow. Uh, which is which is great. And um, so, yeah, we got to start thinking about next year. How many can, how many things can you 
how many projects size wise can you take at once? We, we can handle five projects and do them well. Mm -hmm. um, we've handled more than that and it starts to stretch us a little bit thinner, but five good size projects is a, is a good workload for us. 2019 already. Nice. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So, um, all right. So if you want to give a plug for your chapter, for the people listening, maybe new to BNI, why they should come visit your chapter. Well, if you're looking to grow your business, if you're looking to get busier, if you want to expand, uh, there's no better way to do it than to join the Bull City Business Leaders. I would definitely recommend you come out and see us. Um, if you're ready for more work, we can send it your way, but you better be good at what you do because <laughs> we're only looking for the best. And if you have visit, if you've not visited that chapter, you do need you do need to go for a number of reasons. One is because we're all in it for business. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, uh, I mean, you guys are buttoned up. It is detailed. Here's how it's run, and but that leads has led to the success of the group. We it? make a lot of really good shit happen. <laughs> We like that on your new business card, right? Yeah, I like that. It might be our logo. I don't know. All right. So Triangle B&I, our weekly show where we uh, tell people why they should join B&I to help start or grow a business. And he's a great uh, example. $35,000 the first year. And by year three, you're doing $2 million just through B&I? Just through B&I. Reason enough to join the chapter. Some of us may not get to that $2 million mark depending on your business. Uh, but each week, there'll be somebody here telling you why they did that. Uh, Andy's a great local story. Uh, great week. Great, great reason why you should join BNI. Um, where's the way people can get in touch with you, Andy? Okay, great. So uh, our website is uh, krichko.com, K R I C H C O.com. Uh, you can call us. The phone number is 919 933 1211. And you can certainly send me an email. It's krichko, K R I C H C O, at nc.rr.com. All right. And next week, our guest, I think you may know her, Michelle Ketchum with Acorn and Oak. Oh one yeah, of the big, uh, the big, one of the biggest rental players in the area. Again, she grew it through B and I. We're going to hear her story. But Andy, we appreciate having you today. Oh, and thank good you luck very with much. everything. And, and I, I want to tell you a real quick story sure. about Michelle. Um, so when Michelle joined her chapter, uh, she had a brand new business. She didn't have um, any customers at all. And uh, a referral I had through B and I ended up being a, a, a large apartment complex uh, renovation. So we, we bought a big building for under $400,000. We put 1.275 uh, in it. And, um, and so we had a bunch of money invested in this building. We were planning on selling it as individual condos. And someone came and made an offer to buy the whole building. But in order to buy this building, uh, they needed to have it fully rented. So I went to Michelle and I said, you know, Michelle, can we get this building rented for this amount of money in the next 30 days? And she said, absolutely, no problem at all. And I, was, I didn't know if she would do it or not, but sure enough, in less than a month, she had the building fully rented for more money than we, than we expected. And someone came and bought the entire building. And, um, and now she's grown to exponential numbers and she's a, a great person. Oh, yeah. And, and she, they're, they're growing West. I mean, that company has grown. So you'll hear her story next week. Andy, good luck with everything. Thanks for coming out and talking with us today. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.